um, when you look at the change of voltage across inductor, you get this relationship which um, I'm hoping you are beginning to see some similarity to another relationship that you have seen. You have two dynamic quantities, voltage change on one side and something relating to current on the other side. And you have a constant that's uh, relating them um, together here. Uh, some quantity that's relating to these two dynamic variables together. And when you look at it carefully, um, it's constant. It's constant that depends on physical constant and geometric parameters. Um, have you seen a relationship like this before? I see, I see you shaking your head, but we have covered something, ex well, not exactly. Similar to this, a few, uh, about a month and a half, maybe two months ago. So a uh, capacitor might seem similar. I think it's worth writing down, so let me write it down. With a capacitor, the relationship was, the dynamic quantity was uh, charge is related to the amount of voltage. Charge stored on capacitor is related to the amount of voltage. It's uh, sort of proportional. And the, the constant of proportionality here was, uh, well, let's see. I'm trying to remember. Capacitance was, <laughs> capacitance was defined as charge per voltage, right? So that means Q is equal to, oh. So here, the quantity here would have been the capacitance. So I mean, in some sense, I guess this maybe looks similar to this. Um, two dynamic quantities related through a, 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 related through a, a constant that depends only on physical constant, in this case, epsilon naught, and just geometric parameters. But there's one more that's actually closer to this relationship than this is. Now that deals with the capacitor again. Yeah. What? Is equal to. Uh, oh, oh! I think you are looking, thinking of definition of a, a current. Oh. So we define current as some number of charge divided by some amount of time it takes for that number of charge to flow. We are going to be using that, so you know, it's good not to forget it. But OK, what other relationship have you seen that relates voltage and current in some way together? There's really one other thing that we covered that relates voltage and current. Yeah, resistance. What law defines resistance? Or how is resistance defined? We use Ohm's law, right? Resistance is defined, or if you want to define resistance, that would be voltage divided by current. Or writing in a format like this, you could say change in voltage across a register is equal to resistance times current. So I want you to write down these three relationships together, actually, because um, these three relationships are what we are going to be focusing on in the next, uh, or what's going to be starting point for the next uh, two weeks or so. These are the th uh, representation or fundamental relationship for the three basic circuit elements. This is the register. Oops, um, I think I meant to write on this side. So this is the register. This is the capacitor. I guess we are kind of going on <laughs> reverse chronological order. And this is the relationship for inductor. So um, if you saved this, if you saved this um, handout that was available a while ago, the, uh, the circuit handout, uh, now it'll finally be relevant because we have covered uh, most of things that are on this handout. We have covered registers, capacitors, and now we are beginning to cover inductor. 
And um, the quantity that we look at here, I knew I would choose a wrong letter again. Let me uh, rewrite this capital L because I think that's very confusing with other L's I'm going to write down. So let me turn this into a lowercase l. Um, that'll let me rewrite this as a lowercase l. And this particular combination of quantity, this is what we call inductance. This is what we call inductance. Or here's another way to state what we derived here um, using Faraday's law. We can say the inductance L of a solenoid is all this quantity multi um, you know, multiplied together. So I'm simplifying it a little bit. It's a mu naught times n squared A divided by L. So this is an inductance of solenoid. And um, the video I keep saying I'm going to make is how to calculate uh, this quantity, quantity like this that relates a change in voltage across a uh, inductor with rate of change of current for different geometries. There's really uh, two more interesting geometries that we can cover. So two more interesting geometries. I guess I'll have to think through it to be careful. Well, at least one more interesting geometry we can cover. That's the toroid geometry. Um, that's the one that we, you guys should definitely know how to do. So I'll do that in a video and post it. Um, so, so this was, uh, um, so you know, what, we, what I've been saying so far is what we did on Wednesday. I just went through it quickly on Wednesday. So I want you to take a little more time going over it again. Question? Uh, just a question on that uh, four meters row block inductance. Yeah. So whenever we, whenever I say inductance, uh, self is kind of implied because um, it's either mutual inductance or self-inductance, right? And this is what I mean. Inductor is a bit more um, important because if we just say inductance without any adjective, we mean self-inductance. We don't mean uh, when we mean mutual inductance, we will actually say the word mutual. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why a lot of textbooks are treat self-inductance as a Special case of mutual inductance, yeah. but I feel like this is actually more important relationship. Yeah. All right. Um, so, yeah. So, um, so th this is a constant that characterizes this relationship between voltage and current. 